Hi everyone, my name is Abby and welcome to Black Equity. Today I'm going to be talking about hiring contractors because not every time do it yourself. Yeah. In this video, I'll be sharing three things. The first is who we hired and why we hired them. The second is how we found the contractors. And then the third thing is how we vetted the contractors and decided which person to hire. Now, if you've never watched any of our videos before, you should know that last year, my husband and I bought our very first property, which we renovated and sold for over $100,000 in profit. The reason that we were able to sell it for so much more was primarily because we did most of the work ourselves. But along the way, we also discovered that it's not every job that we could do ourselves or that we wanted to do ourselves, so we ended up hiring those things out. So let's jump into it. The first thing is who we hired. Now we hired some major things out, such as electrical, HVAC, windows and door installation, as well as drywall. In the case of electrical and HVAC, the reason why we needed to hire those things out was because of the license licensing involved in those types of projects. Um, we also didn't want to shock ourselves and die. Um, so that was also why we hired those things out. Um, now, in terms of the installation for the windows and doors, we ended up hiring that out as well as the drywall because we felt at the time that those were too labor intensive for us and we decided to focus our energy on other projects. How we found the contractors. We found most of our contractors either through a simple Google search by searching for, for example, electrician in our city, or we found them on Kijiji. We didn't get any recommendations from friends and family, not because we didn't ask, but because no one really had anyone that they knew and trusted a lot. And I'm actually thankful that we didn't go that route because I feel like I wouldn't have been as diligent um, in my search for a good contractor had I had recommendations from people. But that's not to say that you can't find uh, through recommendations. So how we vetted the contractors. I discovered that a lot of people frown on hiring contractors off Kijiji and the likes of those places because uh, you know they've, they've had a lot of horror stories or they've heard other people with horror stories from Kijiji or Craigslist. But I had a really good experience by hiring people off Kijiji. And I think that the reason why I had such a great experience was because I had a criteria that I wrote down and I followed when I was interviewing people to take over a project. Before I hired anyone, I did these things. The first thing that I did was I brought in at least three to five contractors for every project that I wanted to hire out. So when I was hiring an electrician, I brought in five electricians into the home and interviewed them to get quotes from all of them. Now getting quotes from all these people would help me establish a range for how much the project should cost and I would have an idea of what was involved in that project. The second thing that I did was I asked every contractor similar questions. Um, while getting quotes, I would ask the contractors what the project would look like to them and how they would go about tackling the project. From these types of questions, it would let me into the mind of the contractor and let me know their thought process and how they work. I felt like this was good because not only did it give me an idea of what was involved in the work to be done, but it also gave me an idea of their work ethic. I think I discovered that in, in asking these questions, I could easily weed out the people who didn't really know what they were talking about versus those who had been in the game for a long time. And I didn't ever ask people how long they'd been doing uh, the work for because I didn't feel like that was relevant. Um, I just wanted to know could they do the work and how would they do the work. The third thing that I did was I weeded contractors out based on price. After getting quotes, I would weed them out mostly starting with the highest price. I know that sometimes you do want to hire the, the, the person who charges the most, but in our case, the people who charged the most were so off base that it just didn't make sense. Plus, we were looking to save money, so 
it mostly did not make sense to hire the person who was the highest quoted. Now, I think people will also recommend that you also weed out the people who have the lowest quotes, but in our case, we ended up hiring one or two people with the lowest quotes because they checked out on every other criteria that we had and when we spoke to them we could we could tell that they knew the work that they were doing. If a contractor demands money up front, a lot of money up front, especially for a small project, we automatically weeded them out. And I think that's how you know they get you and that's how you get all these horror stories where a contractor runs away with your money because you've paid them and they haven't even stepped on the project. What we did instead was we established a milestone payment plan where we would pay them a percentage when they reached that certain milestone with the bulk of the money um, left at the end of the project when they had completely done all the work. And we found that this worked a lot for the contractors that we hired as well as us because you know, in cases where we didn't have all the money up front, it gave us a lot of time to gather that money, but it also kept those contractors motivated to finish the work and finish it on time so that they could get paid. Now, the final thing that we did, which might be a little bit con controversial, was I weeded them based on their persona or their personality types. I'll preface this, that I'm sure everyone that I brought in was a good person, but in bringing in three to five contractors per job, I started to see a pattern. Um, and I started to realize that the contractors who spoke a lot, who had a lot of words, were just not the contractors that I would hire. Those who like bragged a lot, and bragged about how good their work was, or those who berated their competitors, or said things like, you know, you'll never get this type of work anywhere else. I just found that those types of people were not the people that I wanted to hire. Rather, I hired the people who were very concise. When I asked them questions, they didn't go off in tangents and they could easily describe what work they were doing, how they would do it, and they could give me a, a good estimate of the time that it would take and the amount that it would cost to do that work. And I think weeding contractors out based off of that criteria and you know that persona it worked for me now i won't say that you know maybe maybe you'll have someone who talks a lot and you know brags a lot and is a great contractor but i just felt like those people were usually more talk than they were action so i hope you enjoyed that video i hope you learned a thing or two about how to hire contractors and the things that you should look out for and not do when you're hiring contractors if you have any uh, hiring stories where you've had uh, horror stories or nightmares or even good stories about hiring contractors, leave that in the comment section below. I love hearing things like this so that I can also learn um, going forward the types of people that I should and should not hire. And let me know how you also found those contractors. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message on Instagram. My handle is at black equity underscore. And yeah, don't forget to like. If you're still here, you might as well subscribe. Just do it. And then send this video to your friends and your family because someone out there will need this video. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.